I'm very sensitive about being called like a creativity guru right now because you can slip into this very dangerous situation where you talk about being creative more than you actually be creative. <laughs> and my books came out of my practice, you know, they came out of my experience as a writer and an artist and trying to figure stuff out. And so it's very important for me to emphasize I'm no sort of expert or anything, you know, that I'm just like this guy that's trying to figure out how to put pictures and words together and make a living from it. And, you know, part of my goal is to try to make the things I've learned accessible to other people. So Steal Like an Artist is a list of 10 things I wish I'd heard when I was just starting out, when I was first, you know, trying to be an artist. Uh, it actually started as a commencement address to a group of community college students in upstate New York. And um, it was funny, actually, it was a miscommunication. It actually wasn't a commencement speech, it was a convocation speech. But the miscommunication, this is what happens with art and you know, creative work, is that the mistakes lead to the good stuff, right? So I thought I was writing a commencement speech. So I was just trying to, you know, I think a lot of advice is autobiographical. Like when people give you advice, they're really just kind of talking to themselves in the past. And so that book was really me trying to talk to the 19-year-old version of myself. And the idea is that if you want to do original work, you don't actually turn away from influence, but you actually embrace influence and you embrace a wide range of influences. And then you take that back to your desk and you weave that into your own thing. Show Your Work started when I was on book tour with Steel Like an Artist. I basically, the number one question I got asked was, you know, how'd you get your stuff out there? You know, how'd you get published? How'd you, you know, how'd you start making work with no publisher, or no, credentials or anything and then where how'd you get to where you were and these are all questions about self-promotion and I'm like a lot of artists I hate thinking about self-promotion you know so I wanted to write a book about self-promotion for people who hate the very idea of self-promotion and that's what show your work is about show your work is about um, there's a whole new way of operating with the internet where you don't have to really worry about self-promotion you just worry about sharing and so I wanted to kind of write this operating manual for a way to kind of Instead of going away and doing your work and only promoting yourself when you have something to sell or some big show to, to promote, that kind of thing, there's a way to share your work in a way where you're sharing the process of what you do just as much as the product. And so it's this kind of everyday kind of sharing where you're just sharing a little bit every day and then those pieces add up over time. Normally when we think about creative work, we think about the lone genius, you know, the person in their studio or their hovel, like, you know, cordoned off from the world, just like pulling things out of their brain and putting it on paper or sculpting it or making it into a product or whatever. Um, that's the lone genius myth, right? There's another way of thinking about creativity that Brian Eno named, the famous musician, and he calls it senius. And that is that a lot of what we think of as genius is actually the result of a bunch of people in a scene, like a whole kind of ecology of talent. And so a lot of the big ideas and the big creative works that we think of as changing our culture, they were a result of a whole group of people. And so if you start thinking of in terms of senius and not genius, that changes the way you operate. It changes the way you operate as an artist or a creative person. You stop worrying about how you can be this lone individual, and you start worrying about how you can contribute to this larger scene, because as you help the scene along, everybody kind of rises. Yeah. So a lot of creative folks and people in different trades, they think that trade secrets are really important. You know, you don't reveal what you know. You keep what you know to yourself because that's what makes you an expert and that what, that's what makes people want you. But um, in the book I say teach what you know. You know, there, we, we're in this world now where you can, you can be a teacher without having a classroom, you know. And one of the things that happens when you teach what you know, when you, you know, when you put your knowledge and what you've learned out there is that people, it doesn't devalue your work, it actually makes your work even more valuable to people because they see your thought process, they, they see how much work goes into it. One of the stories I tell in the book is about Aaron Franklin, who runs Franklin Barbecue in my hometown of Austin, Texas. Aaron, you know, his barbecue, he sells out every day, there's a line around the block but uh, he does a YouTube series where he teaches people how to make barbecue. And what happens when you watch Aaron's, you know, barbecue videos is that you don't immediately think, oh, well, I'm gonna do barbecue for myself in my backyard. You actually kind of think, wow, 
there's a lot of intuition and knowledge that goes into this and I will gladly pay $13 a pound for his brisket. <laughs> You know, and so when you teach what you know, you reveal your knowledge and you're becoming an expert in people's eyes.